Hey there, YouTube world. My name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek. And if you want to see me build this Sintra PVC board budget build, stay tuned in the video. All right, it is time to make some armor out of PVC slash Sintra board here. I literally have about 30 minutes of experience with this stuff. So we are gonna learn together. I feel like I have enough experience from working in a, a, a shop experience that I can work my way through this. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of show you what I got on the table here, what I'm going to, to use. I don't know if these tools will work or not, but we're gonna learn together. Uh, first thing, I tried to cut this stuff with a utility knife, box knife. And it does work okay, but I'm using six millimeter Sintra. It comes in three millimeter, three millimeters around an eighth inch. This is around a quarter inch. I wanted my armor to look nice and stout. So I went with the six millimeter. Um, so I'm gonna try this little handsaw. Uh, I bought a, a bunch of different versions of saw blades to try. I've got a 10 tooth per inch. I've got an 18 tooth per inch. This one came with the, the saw itself, and I'm gonna say if that's a 10, this is maybe a, a six or a, I'm not quite sure, but it's a, so just a little more aggressive blades and a little hand saw. I did a little test cutting here in the corner and it seemed to cut okay. So we're gonna attempt to use this first if not, um, so I really want, this was 10 bucks at Menards. I want to be able to try to show the average Joe that doesn't have all the power tools, like a jigsaw or a bandsaw, how they can cut this stuff out. Is it going to work or not? I don't know. We're going to find out together. I might have to bust out the jigsaw, um, especially with the quarter inch or six millimeter uh, PVC, but you could definitely probably cut with a box knife that three millimeter pretty easily. Um, I just, when I was, I was cutting a little corner because I was doing some testing uh, for glue, what kind of glue I wanted to use, uh, it ended up like, I was cutting down and it broke out and I didn't want that. So that's why I decided to go with the handsaw route. Now I'm going to do a couple pieces with the handsaw first, just to show you that it can be done and kind of learn. And then I may like cut the video out and go cut the rest of this stuff out with the easy tools just to save some time. Um, and make this video more time friendly because <laughs> some of these videos can get pretty long. But I want to see how feasible it is and maybe I'll cut it all out by hand if it's easy. Um, but we'll definitely try that. I've got some sandpaper, 150 grit, sticky back sandpaper. What I'm going to do with this is I want sticky back so you can fold it in half and use it by hand with a little bit of flex in it. Or I have this nice flat board um, that I'm going to stick to to get nice straight edges. Sandy is going to be important, I'm feeling, with this Citra stuff. I've got my drill. Um, some of you may not have access to a drill, uh, but I'm going to use my drill to get the drill out the radiuses, especially when you're sawing through by hand, a little breakout points, because it might be hard to get around some of these corners. Um, I've got my heat gun, which will be used to, to form. Uh, once we get all our flat layouts cut out, we're gonna start forming it. You heat it up and it kind of relaxes and you can kind of push it in the shape. And then once it cools down, it stays in that shape. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't have a lot of experience. I have a lot of, I have a lot of experience doing that with Kydex, which is a similar um, material, but it's not like this stuff is a cord material. So there's a lot of airspace in it, I believe. I could be wrong. So I don't have a whole lot of experience forming this with the heat gun. So that might be a learning experience too. Uh, what else do I got on the table here? I, I got gloves for dealing with the heat. I got some masking tape just in case. How I'm gonna attach my templates. I've got spray glue. You'll, I forgot to put it on the table, but I'll be grabbing that to attach my templates just like I do on the steel. And these will, if they don't come off, they'll just have to be on the back side or I'll sand them off or something. Um, but this might not be a get up. <laughs> A good idea attaching it might turn out to be a big pain in the butt and then glue so what I've learned I did a couple of little test pieces here one was with actual PVC cement and primer 
This stuff actually stuck super well with this PVC board, obviously, because it's made for PVC. It just doesn't set up like that. Um, so with some of the more easy clampable, I'll probably use this stuff to glue. But for stuff that I need to kind of glue into place and keep it there, I'm going to use this super glue gel by Gorilla, which seemed to work really well in the test too. So depending on what's what, I'm going to use this gel glue um, or the PVC glue because they both stuck really well and it seems to be a pretty tight bond. Um, so yeah, I've got my templates here. I've got my, I'm going to do the season one or the death wash version of a chest plate, the new uh, post empire chest plate. So I definitely didn't do myself any favors with ease with these because this is a pretty complex um, chest plate. My recommendation if you're just jumping into building a Mando is do your standard set, your standard Boba Fett looking set with the separate pieces because to do a flat layout, it's just going to be way easier to form and shape. These, This is a layered chest plate. It's going to have a lot of different bends. Do yourself some favors. If you're just getting started, go with the, the, the simple Boba Fett style with the collar, the, two, the left and right chest, and the ab plate, and, and the, the iron heart to center diamond. Um, that's going to be your easiest route to start. And then you can, oh, as you kind of get used to working with Sintra, if you're going Sintra, then once you figure out how it works and how it feels and how it reacts to certain tools, which I'm going to be finding out here very soon, um, you can go complex. But I've got a lot of experience making stuff, so I'm, and I want to, like I said, I'm kind of making a Death Watch knockoff, not an exact Death Watch kit. So I want that cool post Empire chest look for my costume. Um, one thing that was kind of, I was knocking around in my brain was how am I going to do the shoulder belts? Now you can form a pretty decent dome. I've seen some pretty impressive stuff built with these complex shapes. Um, but like I said, I don't have a lot of experience. So what I ended up doing is I went to Menards and I picked up two of these PVC, six inch PVC um, 90s. And I'm gonna cut my shoulders out of this right here. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll kind of sand it down and maybe give it some cool features to make it look like a cool shoulder belt and you'll only be able to get one shoulder belt out of these so I bought two. Now these were uh, $14 a piece so that's pretty expensive but for the time I believe it's going to save us it might be worth it and I believe PVC prices just like everything right now um, are way up so if anything if it ever eventually calms down hopefully these will get cheaper and this will be a great post-empire looking shoulder belt. So that's what I did with that. So I'm gonna kind of go through the pieces that I got here. I got my chest plates here, the, the random place uh, pieces. I've got my butt plate here. Um, I've got my thighs. I've got what I'm gonna attempt to use for my gauntlets here. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to do knees or not, but I printed off a set just in case. And I've got my back plate. So that's all the stuff that I, and I know you probably can't see that, but I'm just kind of going through all this while we're here. And I bought two sheets of Sintra. They're both 24 by 48. Hopefully that's enough. Um, and then I'll kind of go over prices as I go through all this stuff, how much it costs to do each part of this costume build as we go. So I'm going to kind of get situated here, um, and then we'll get our templates cut out and pasted down, and we'll start cutting some material. So, wish me luck, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, so I got my template cut out here, piece of paper. Now this is the right-hand side, or possibly the left-hand side if I have to reverse it, of the chest plate. As you can see here, I've got all my bend lines uh, for when I do it out of metal. And what I'm thinking is, is I'm actually going to have to cut on these bend lines and cut these pieces out, bevel them and glue it back together because I don't think I can get a nice sharp line on these edges because I want these edges to be semi sharp uh, by bending them with the heat. So I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to cut this stuff out by hand. I decided I'm going to try 
this metal blade first. A little finer edge to give me a little more control because I'm afraid as I'm using a coarser, a coarser blade might rattle and crack this thing across the sheet. I'm not sure how brittle this PVC stuff is and what it likes and what it doesn't like. And since I'm not going super fast with the bandsaw, uh, it, which makes the teeth go super fast and makes it less likely to catch and rip. I'm gonna try using this fine tooth. Now this might be turn out to be stupid, but we're gonna find out together. So I've got a piece of cardboard here to spray this on. I'll glue it down and we're gonna start cutting and see how it goes. I got some Gorilla spray adhesive here. Okay. Let's get cutting. So I got it done, got it cut out. I did not cut these out on the line yet because I decided I think I'm gonna try to attempt to bend them over uh, before I cut them out. Um, but to be frank, that works, but it sucks <laughs> super bad. Um, it just goes really slow. Um, like the paper, the gluing it down like that. So maybe what I'll recommend is that the glue the templates onto a piece of poster board and cut the po poster board out all nice and then trace it out instead of gluing it directly um, to the, the, the PVC board. I just noticed that this PVC board has a plastic layer on the other side that I didn't, uh, didn't know was there. So that would have been nice to be able to glue the paper to that instead of directly to the thing. But I think this will peel off okay, but I want to keep it on there. So I think what I'm going to do now is put this off to the edge, keep this up and try to flex, and try to uh, heat it up across there and get the line right on my table. Heat that up and, and try to push it down into place for bending it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do here next. But yeah, the, the sanding gets the edge pretty decent. We're, I'm gonna bevel this whole edge to make it look cool. Um, but yeah, that was not fun. I'm gonna definitely cut the rest of these out with my bandsaw. Um, I have a cheap, band stuff from Nards that was like a hundred bucks so if you want to go that route it might be worth it to buzz these out real quick <laughs> but i know this is supposed to be a budget build but you definitely can do that i find um the fine tooth blade works pretty decently for precision and the, i put a coarse tooth blade on there for a while to get going a little quicker um but yeah that's a lot different than metal. I'll tell you that right now. So we're just gonna keep on learning together and I'm gonna try to actually form this plate before I cut out the rest of them. I'm trying to learn as much as I can from this first piece before I start cutting up the rest of the sheet. Um, so yeah, we're gonna bend this next. Whew. All right, we are a day later and I decided to try to figure some things out before we went a little further. Um, like I said, um, this is where I'm at right now, actually. You can kind of see I got this thing cut and molded. Oh, it formed. It's probably really hard to tell because that's white. I wonder if you could. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys how I came up with this. I just wanted to do this to try to figure out uh, a recipe to get this in the shape that I wanted to get it, with, especially with these bent edges and all that. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that. Um, like I said, you can definitely get this cut out with this. It's just going to take some time. Um, it's tedious. It's hard to do. So, but you can get to this using a handsaw, a block of wood, and sticking this stick-on sandpaper to it in uh, sanding, rolling, using the heat gun 
to form everything and I'm going to show you guys how it went about doing that. So you can get a decent product or a decent finish with some hand tools and some, um, what do they call it? Elbow grease. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. So I'm going to show you how I did this on this one. Now I went ahead and actually cut this one out with my Rikon Menards uh, bandsaw, which the edges and all that stuff cuts pretty nice. This will still need to be sanded. Um, but I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that you can cut this all out by hand if you need to, and you definitely can. It's just gonna take a lot of time. So I went ahead and got the rest of my stuff cut out. I glued everything onto my sheet. Um, got it cut out with the bandsaw. So we're going to start doing the most important part is forming these things. I need to put another line on here. Let me do that real quick. All right. Oh, better. I got my line on here. This line was missing because there's a little yellow tick down here that's really hard to see. Um, but what I figured out and what I'm going to do, um, like I said before, I was going to cut these off and glue them on. I actually found out an easier way of doing this. And I'm just gonna go in here with a utility knife. And first I'm going to score out all my lines. This is the back side. I'm gonna score out all my lines here and score this one. And on, then I'm gonna take my paper off because that will give me all my lines. I'm gonna actually cross hatch these circles in here too like so if you can see that because i am actually gonna pop holes in here i think i think so i can get it bolted on here perfectly and then glue it down and then i'll just fill the holes with some bondo um so i'm gonna basically draw out all my lines with a razor blade and then what i did is you can take your razor blade with kind of a small blade like that go in a little deeper right because we don't want to cut all the way through and then you take it on the bench and you can shave like a chamfer on either side and that gives it the perfect place to bend in line and get a decent a decent corner instead of a big radius it's a it's a, it's a decent radius for the look that i'm going for so i'm gonna this will all make sense here in a minute so I'm gonna go ahead and get this rolling. I'll kind of do the little fast forward mode and stop in between places that I think are important to explain what exactly I'm doing and kind of show you uh, what it looks like. So I'm gonna get rolling on that. All right, I got my little lines in here. Hard to see with that, but um, next up, I'm going to act. This this line's not going to get chamfered, but we're going to chamfer these. This is just more of a marker to where I need to clamp it to the table, heat it up, and put a bend in it. So I'll, I'm going to show you how I will go about chamfering these now. So what I did is just take this at an angle and try not to go all the way through and cut just a little bit of relief here. So when I heat this up, it's gonna bend to those points really easy and give us a defined line here across there that, that we're looking for. 
Actually, I may have went a little too much because I can almost bend this. Whoops! <laughs> I, I can almost break that one off. So I'll have to glue that on. <laughs> but we're learning, right? <laughs> anyway, I'll get this glued on, which frankly might not be a big deal, and then bend this one into place. All right, I got my huge embarrassing failure fixed. The only problem is now, it's got a nice sharp seam here. This one has a radius, so I'm gonna have to actually sand this radius in. Fair enough. We're just gonna keep on rolling and yeah, roll with the punches like they say. I'm gonna put a, a crease across here. I'll kind of show you how I'm doing that. And then I'm gonna put a slight bend across here with the heat gun. But I'm gonna put this one in first and then that one. If you have a set of clamps, it works nice. If you can get it clamped up against the table here. It doesn't have to be perfectly on that line because you already have that, that chamfer in there and hopefully it's gonna follow that chamfer. I'm gonna wear gloves because this does get hot. You can melt this, so just be careful with the heat gun. I'm just gonna heat along here. Just like that, we've got that form. It doesn't take much. Um, this is like thermal plastic. The only bad part about this is if you put it in your tote, you put it in your car and it gets hot, all this stuff might relax back out and flatten out. So just be careful. Okay, I'm gonna make this other bend now. Got that slight bend in there. Just FYI, this stuff will dent with your fingers. Um, this has been that very kind of frustrating experience, just to be honest. This stuff is not the easiest stuff to work with, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I, like I said before, I highly recommend probably starting with a simple set of uh, regular Boba Fett armor that doesn't have all these crazy bends and stuff like that, just to see how Sintra works but I'm already committed so I'm gonna just keep on fighting through um, the next thing we're gonna do now that I have my general shape is we're gonna sand this now this stuff is a mixture between wood and styrofoam as the shavings are it got really messy in here yesterday um, so I'm gonna do most of my sanding out in my garage uh, because this stuff really sucks to try to vacuum up it kind of uh, Especially I've got a hard or like a vinyl floor in here. So it just kind of pushes and you're trying to kind of chase it with the vacuum So just be warned this stuff is messy uh, But I'm gonna go ahead and sand this in front of the camera just to kind of show you how it sands and uh, Work through this one piece and then I'm gonna do the rest of the sanding on the rest of that stuff out in the garage uh, so what I've got here is a chunk of wood and these menards sticky back so I can stick it to this wood uh, DA paper and I'm just gonna straighten out these edges uh, smooth over where I need to smooth over kind of try to make it look like this one nice and clean sanding really does this is kind of like sculpting almost so here, uh, the stuff is the mixture between working with foam and working with I'm not even sure but it, it sculpts it's like a really hard foam so you can sculpt it get really nice radius edges smooth it out if you do get these dents in there you can heal it by heating up a little bit and sometimes they'll relieve but anyway this is 150 grit sandpaper you could probably go a little more aggressive uh, but this will work so the first thing I'm gonna do is just clean up all my edges as in this, flatten them out, get rid of all my saw marks. OK, 
Okay. Now I've got nice clean edges. You want to use a block of wood with a nice straight edge, especially for these straights, because if you're doing this by hand, this edge is going to get a little wonky and you can really straighten it up with a nice flat block, right? I've hit my, put radiuses on all my edges. Got everything straightened out. I'll kind of show you the difference. This is what a bandsaw edge looks like. It's actually pretty clean, a lot cleaner than the hand one. So you will have a lot more sanding uh, when you do it by hand with the saw blade. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to chamfer all my edges to make it look like that's kind of how they are in the show. You could just leave them flat if you like the way that looks, but I'm going to chamfer all my edges and I'm also going to try to smooth this out to make it look more like this one. So just more sanding. what you're looking for I was trying to run it at an angle right a chamfer man it's one of those days where everything is gonna fight me I think <laughs> anyway um, so when you're trying to chamfer this angle here you're looking to make this there's an internal line right here that you probably cannot see to the outside edge here and you're trying to just to chamfer it over all the way around to give it that nice, nice depth look. Now that's not the final spot. I'm gonna take one of these 3M spongy things and radius it all off so it's nice and radiused over. You can see how I sanded this. It now has a radius in it. You guys probably can't see none of this, can you? It's supposed to focus here. Yeah, I can't focus on that white, I'm, I apologize. Anyway, hopefully maybe when I get some paint on these, you'll be able to see what I'm doing, but... Alright, so I got this soft block. It's probably the same. I think it's 150 grit, too. And I'm going to smooth everything out and radius over, soften up the edges um, to make it look nice. All right, so one thing I could say about this PVC board, Sintra, whatever you want to call it, is it sands really nice. And you can really finish out your part to make it look smooth and pretty if you take your time with the sanding, especially making your edges nice and straight and then really prepping this. Because I'm really happy with that. I believe we've got a pretty close matching set we are on our way even though this has been a big pain in the butt i think it's going to pan out in the end so let's keep on marching forward the next thing i'm going to mess with is figuring out this backer plate uh, i'm not sure exactly what i'm gonna, usually there's another i have a metal plate that i double on this but i think what i'm going to do once i get this top edge radius over and get my plates settled in. So I may put a line across here and then take my razor blade and cut in a relief and make this my bottom plate. So it will come down, have a little relief so it looks like a separate plate. But let's see how that pans out here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do will actually be, the first thing, will be to bend this little thing down. Uh, but we have our center diamond section here and i've been trying to think through how to do this one way would be to i've got this little thing here to get this on right get that drawn in there and cut it out and then just put a backer plate on it but i've been messing around with a couple things the first thing i did was cut this out try to heat up this here and press it in to make like a, I don't know what you call that, but the indent in here. Now that did not work with the uh, Sintra PVC board. 
but it did work. Whew. It did work with a piece of wood and some clamps. <clears throat> now this is how I'm going to do this. But if you don't have access to the tools to make a block of wood like this, my recommendation would be to cut it out and glue on a piece behind it. You could sand off the edges, radius it, and make it look nice. But I really, really like how this works. <clears throat> So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this piece of wood, clamp it down, get my little cool indent, and that should make it look really cool. Because when you put that up on there, it's just going to make it look, look, look nice. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I want this to be the surface of my thing so I have to transfer over I'll have to put a center line here and take this that that bottom hole is right on the center there so I'm gonna lay out these lines more or less on here put this on here trace around it so I have a good location to put that and press the form my little diamond into place and that should look really nice so that's the steps that I'm gonna do next here I'm going to actually probably scribe this out, cut my uh, chamfer line in there, get this top set because this bends in over top of there because that's actually sitting about like so. We'll get that in and then I'm going to go ahead and lay out my, actually I'll probably lay out my lines first. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we're doing now. More hard stuff to see <laughs> with the pen lines in there. I tried to emboss a little uh, strip in here too. It kind of worked, but not really, so I'm not even gonna bother showing you how I try to do that because I think I'm just gonna paint this little strip in there. Uh, but hopefully you can kind of see the indentation there. Let me turn. Anyway, a lot of this stuff will come out when I do the painting. So, the next thing I'm going to do is put a slight bend in here. I'm just going to heat this up across here and probably do this with my hands. So, it just needs to be slight. Alright, so I'm going to clean this up, sanding out in my garage here and get this all smoothed out and then we'll glue this all up and we'll be pretty close to being done with our chest plate. I got my little slight bend in there. I might put more in there once everything's glued together, uh, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to get this sanded out and we'll be back. So there was a clip just before this one, but I couldn't use it because I forgot to mute my TV and the Star Wars theme was playing because it was the end of the Star Wars movie so I didn't want to get this video pulled down for copyright infractions. 
So I figured I'd, I'd just do a quick voice over here. Um, what I'm doing is using PVC glue like you would use if you're doing plumbing. And I am going to glue the chest plates down and everything together. So that's what I'm doing here. I've just kind of traced out the line around where the chest plate is going to be on the, the front side and on the back side. I'm using the primer here. I'll add the, the glue here in a second and then clamp it all together. All right, friends. I think we are making some progress here. Might have to give it a little more flex through the middle here. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a, like a finished sand around it, just make sure everything's tidied up. And then I'm gonna hit it with a coat of primer and we'll see what it actually looks like because white is not the best color for showing you what's going on here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Give it a finished sand. Well, I was waiting for this to set up and it seems like that PVC glue worked really well. Um, went ahead and sanded, sanded these. It's so hard to show you guys. Um, on my thigh plates, there's that little center strip that's actually raised. I decided to do the same thing with the razor blade as I did with these corners. And I just use a straight edge like so, and scribe the line with the razor blade. Set the thing to like that, gave it a nice score. And then I cut out this side, and then I cut out that side like of each thing. So it's almost like a 45 degree angle. Now when you cut these, these edges are kind of gonna be like this, but that's where that sanding block comes in and you can Go right up and down that thing and straighten that thing out beautifully. So there'll be a cool feature in each. There's that one. And I radiused all the edges. And then on this side plate, there's this. So man, I am actually falling in love with Sintra sanding wise. It sands so nice and you kind of struggle through and get your pieces cut out. And you're like, oh, that doesn't look all that great. And then you sand it with that sanding block and make all the edges nice and straight and smooth. And then you break over the edges and sand them and it just looks beautiful. Now I hope that I can just form these correctly um, and we'll have a nice set of looking armor out of um, some pretty cheap materials. So I'm going to get this finished sanded, get it primed and I'll come back and show you kind of the finished product of the chest plate that we've been working on. All right, a quick little detour before we see that chest plate all primered is I'm going to show you guys how I shaped my thigh plate what I ended up doing is getting a I think this is like a three inch PVC pipe and I'm going to go ahead and heat up kind of half of the thigh plate and roll it over the tube kind of rolling it back and forth and then I'm going to heat up the other side and roll it over so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I formed my thigh plates right here Let me show you where we're at so far. All right, I got my chest done. Not done done, but uh, fabricated. I'm gonna need to probably put a little bit of Bondo on these top edges. But you can kind of see where we're at here. I got this all put together. And like I said, if you put your paper on here, man, it really sticks pretty good. Uh, so I'm just gonna have it on the back side. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time to peel this off. So I got the chest plate done. I kind of showed you how I went about forming the thigh plate. These are done-ish. You know, they need paint. I'm happy with the, the details. You can put as much details in these as you want, but I'm really happy with 
how this stuff sands. I'm really falling in love with how this stuff sands and makes it smooth. It really does sand really well. I got my little butt plate done. Radius corners. And then I went ahead and finished out my back plate. I can kind of show you how this is formed here. It's a big radius here and the small radius is here. And these ones I just bent. You know, you really focus your heat. I can't really see that. Focus your heat on where you want it to bend. So you're not splashing a bunch of heat over and then push it down to however you want it. And then on this, I used like uh, another PVC tube or something round. And I just kind of worked it like this around that to get that to form. You're gonna really have to be creative um, with your forms, finding stuff around the house with the radiuses you want, and just working with this stuff. If you're a novice or you're just jumping into making uh, PVC central armor, you're gonna probably have to buy a lot more uh, because you're probably gonna screw up a lot. <laughs> and I, I personally have too, so. Um, the stuff is, I, I'm not gonna say it's hard to work with, but until you get to know the feel of how much heat to put into it, and that kind of stuff and how it reacts to heat, you're probably gonna end up screwing some stuff up because it does, like right here, you kind of see that? The stuff, especially if you're heating it on the outside, even if you just take your thumb and press it in when it's hot, it's gonna put a dent there. Uh, and you can kind of heal it out with heat, but then you might relax this. Anyway, um, yeah, just get extra Sintra to give yourself some room. But yeah, that looks really great. I'm really happy with how this looks. Now I've figured out how I'm going to mount my stuff. I'm actually excited about this because I think it's gonna work really well and it may kind of change the game for mounting Sintra armor. Now you will need the thicker six millimeter to do it this way, not the three millimeter. Uh, three millimeter you might have to go with Chicago screws uh, I'm, I'm trying to get away from Velcro because I feel like Velcro, I've seen a lot of armor falling off and getting bumped and tearing off as you're walking through crowds. I really like my armor to be attached to my vests with a hard point that's not coming off. And I think I have figured out a way to do this and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that now. I bought, you can buy these screws. These are 1032 by half inch machine screws. I got them from Menards. Um, nuts and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a propane torch and a pair of pliers i'm going to heat the end of the bolt up and press it flush into the back of the armor and it will settle in there and let it cool and then i'm going to take a fender washer a one inch fender washer we'll sand this down and we will cap it with the e6000 glue put it on do all the points, I believe that should be a really good mounting system for the Sintra armor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, kind of show you what's what, kind of explain what I'm doing. So that's gonna be our next step is getting mounting points on all these armor plates. First thing I'm gonna do is take this, our one inch washers and figure out where we want our mounting points to be. Cause you don't wanna get too high up in this corner cause then you won't be able to get the washer. So you're gonna mark these all out making sure that you can get a, a washer in that actual space you can mark out the center circle too to put your bolt in there next thing you're going to do is grab a pair of pliers Grab a hold of your bolt. These will get hot, so you don't want to touch them. Heat the head of the bolt up. All right, I'm gonna let that sit and cool. You're gonna wanna take the washers like you saw me do, press it down to make sure that's all nice and flat. Let it cool. Then we're gonna sand all of our surfaces. We're gonna sand our washers, and we're gonna sand the circle around that so we get a nice 
tight um, bond with the E6000 glue because if you don't surface prep, especially these washers, the glue's not gonna stick to it that great. We really want a nice mechanical bond, so we wanna sand our surfaces. So we'll let this cool, we'll get sanding, and then I'll get stuff glued down. All right, I'm gonna show you what we got going on here. Washers aren't glued on. I just wanted to get you up close and personal to these. I'll take this washer off. Now when you set these in, you wanna make sure that they're flush. These will stick somewhat in there. They're not permanent, it's not like it's glued but the, the, the PVC will bond, or kind of bond around it. Um, so that's kind of nice. But you can see how it's flush mounted. We're gonna use the washers as a support system. We're gonna glue that washer down and you will have these mounts. Now these are extra long. That's gonna be a pain for people that don't have the ability to grind these down. So if you can find shorter screws, you definitely wanna find shorter screws, but I have the ability to grind these down um, these are half inch, you might want to go 3 8 5 16 long, not uh, why you might be able to find some 832 screws, but a lot of the stuff I have here, I use 1032, so that's the way I went. So the next thing we're going to do is take all these washers up. We're going to sand prep both surfaces of the washer and the, the screw, and then we are going to glue these down with the E6000 glue. As you can see, probably here on the table, I went ahead and got all the rest of these. So get this prepped and glued. I'll do that on camera and then I'll go ahead and get the rest of that stuff glued up off camera. I'm actually probably going to pull, as I do this, to make it easy, pull these screws up. Actually, that's in there pretty good. Maybe I won't, I'm, I'm gonna see. If I can get the screws up and make it easier to sand, but if those are in there pretty solid, I might want to leave that bond alone just to give it a little more extra strength. deal with some of this paper so that took me a little bit of time but we're gonna let this set up I got the glue squishing out the edges use enough glue make sure it's squishing out but then you need to let this sit for a while probably 24 hours I think is the cure time on E6000 I know that's a pain in the butt but I like the flexibility of the E6000 glue and that's why I'm using it so I'm hoping this is a great set of mounts for six millimeter um, Sintra. All right, while well, my washers and all that stuff, are, I got those all done. I let those sit. I'm gonna work on these shoulder bells. So this is what I've got drawn out here on this. These holes, I'm gonna try to put a half inch hole with the drill bit here. And then I'm going to attempt part, part of cutting this with the handsaw. And then I'm gonna make it easy on myself and go to a jigsaw out in the garage. But I just, I'm curious to see if you can cut these with that, because this would be really handy for those that don't have a lot of access to tools. So we're gonna put our three half inch holes, cut, and we'll see how this goes. Here's the shoulder bell. I took it out to the garage uh, to use the jigsaw to do this. That was way easier if you got a jigsaw. Well, well worth it. The handsaw is not ideal. It's very hard. I think you can do it, but it's going to take time. And yeah, it's not very easy to cut with this. So that being said, if you're somebody with a lot of experience, you can probably pull this off with that handsaw. 
Other than that, I would, like I said, if you're going to do the Boba Fett templates, the shoulder bells are way simpler than these round ones that I'm going for. So, like I said, I'm doing kind of a Death Watch ripoff, but I think that's going to make a cool looking shoulder bell for my costume. I think it's going to fit nice. It's a little shorter than I wanted, but I'm going to put a raised ridge on this here. We'll do that real quick. But I'm going to go sand this, flush it up, get it radius and looking nice. I left this little step on it because I thought that looked kind of cool. So yeah, I'm really digging that so far. So let's keep it going. I'm gonna sand this and I'll be back. Um, I kind of want to do a, a review of what I all I learned um, on making this thing and I'm really happy with how this came out now this was a pretty complex build so like I said like five times before in the past in this video if you're just starting out do the more simpler build uh, do the more Boba Fett style uh, build they're, they're gonna be easier to cut out um, and not, well, I guess that's not true they're gonna be easier to form it's a more simple process of forming. Cutting out is going to be um, relative to what the tools you have access to. Um, all right. The, the, so to start out with, I recommend if you don't have a handsaw or a jigsaw, this finer tooth, 18 tooth per inch little handsaw. This thing was like 10 bucks. It's going to take you a lot of time to cut out your material. I recommend maybe cutting slightly outside of your line and sand to your line on your paper. Um, if you are going to use the, I do recommend to not actually glue your templates down with uh, the spray glue. I recommend spray gluing them onto some poster board, cutting them out nice on that and transferring those lines onto your Sintra board and then cutting around those lines. Because I found when I was sawing with this, uh, the paper wasn't 100% tacked down and you'd rip the paper and fold it over and start to lose your line. So that's what I recommend on that. Um, next up, I actually did, well I'm thinking about it, try this 10. If you wanna go a little faster, you can use this. Um, but I say if you're gonna cut it out by hand, take your time so you don't ruin your piece of Sintra. Next up, what did I learn? Let me kind of look through. When I was forming this, like I did the relief cuts, just make sure you don't go too deep and snap off your thing. It ended up working out okay. Uh, this is the one that I broke. And you can't really tell that I broke it. It glued on there. The super glue works really well for that type of gluing. And I prefer the PVC glue uh, anywhere that you can clamp. All the way around I recommend the PVC glue because that stuff works really well for PVC and that's what this is um, yeah the sanding blocks the straight sanding blocks the foam sanding blocks are key to making these look nice take your time nice straight edges and then hit it with the foamy type and it will kind of break everything into place as you notice on here when you're clamping I, I had some little nicks. Honestly, that's okay because when I go black wash this, the black wash is going to set in that and it's going to look like battle damage. Um, you can get too hot on here and ruin the cut. So really kind of pay attention to your, uh, your heat as you're heating it up. Um, what ends up happening is you can kind of see here, maybe. Let me turn this light real quick. 
it was actually it will actually start to melt your PVC um, and then it kind of gets all deformed when you are heating it and you are pushing with your fingers it will dent too so be aware of that when I did these pieces like in the video I actually tried to heat a lot of the backside first and then hit a little bit on the front and more backside so the front isn't crushing when you're putting pushing on it I tried to form this to my leg it didn't work so I grabbed a piece of just around something that you can gradually kind of roll this over to form it. Once you do get it to the right temperature, it will form really easy. It's just, you know, it's a, such a fine line between just right and too much. So really pay attention. Um, I highly recommend getting a pair of clean gloves, even though these clean gloves are gonna smudge it um, to form with, because it does get very hot. Um, yeah. I did, I recommend like talking about these, um, these lines are awesome, I, I really like them. I would do this after you get formed because when I spread it open, you can see how it opened up the knife slit in there which is probably, I should have known that before I did it. But I'm really happy with how these legs came out too. Here's the big one. I think those will be a nice, those are some nice pieces there. This stuff is somewhat forgiving. If you mess it up, lay it on your table, heat, or table, heat it back up, and let it uh, flatten out. Now, the one thing I keep I need to mention is how much that 24 by 48 inch sheet cost. It was a quarter inch thick. On Amazon, it says it's 35 bucks, but there's $12 shipping. So it was around 50 bucks for uh, this complete set of armor. I was able to get everything except the knees on that 24 by 48 inch piece. My size, I'm around 5'9", 5'10", 180 pounds. So you'll have to adjust accordingly. I bought two sheets just in case. Um, so, but I'm, I'm in my armor for 50 bucks right now. Uh, if you have a plastics company in your city or town, I recommend going over there. You could probably get it a bigger sheet for cheaper or you could drop it down if you don't want to spend 50 bucks on Amazon, um, and that's your only option. You can drop it down to three millimeter, which will be about an eighth inch thick, which should work. I just really like the way the, the depth is on the thicker armor, but eighth inch should work. And that I believe was $18 with $9 shipping or 19 and $10. So it's around 30 bucks. Um, so that is an option too. You can go thinner and forming and stuff will be way easier because it is thinner. Um, yeah, what else did I learn? And all right, that's the budget build. Hope you guys learned something. I know I learned a ton, uh, a lot of tips and tricks in there I hope that will work for you. Uh, I definitely recommend buying a bunch more material. Um, this material cost me around $50 uh, for the Sintra sheet. The shoulder bells were like 30 bucks. You don't have to go this route. Um, but I saw these at Menards and I'm like, oh man, that'd make a beautiful shoulder for this budget build since it's easy. Um, so yeah, what we got coming up next will be the gauntlet. So do its own video and then weathering and damage on all the stuff and getting it painted. And that will be a video here coming up shortly. Um, and then we'll do soft parts, leather parts, and the final fit and finish of everything. Probably four or five videos, maybe. Give a little, take a little, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, that is that video. Um, if you don't mind, if you want to support me, you can like my videos, you can throw a comment, you can subscribe to my channel. All those will help my algorithm um, get my videos boosted and so to show other people. Also, I've got a Patreon account if you want access to these templates. It's over there at Patreon. Those are also Dinjarin templates and a bunch of other template forms. Uh, so you can head over there if you either just want to support me or want access to my templates, they're over there. Um, so yeah, here's for more. My name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again, guys. Thank you.